like you said, Pastor, the new normal. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that. All I was doing was correcting their body and putting them in what's called homeostasis. You want to be in balance. You, let me tell you something. You have no idea how powerful the healing properties of your body are. Yeah. You take it for granted. Now, I'm in the business. You take it for granted just how a cut heals. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay? Your body has enormous, miraculous, unexplainable healing properties that you are totally unaware of. Okay? And again, lucky I'm not God because I be letting you know every single day. Uh -huh. <laughs> about it. Mm -hmm. Now the last principle, okay, is number eight, which is almost as vitally important as the first principle. The last principle is this, is you need to put yourself in a position of accountability to someone other than yourself Amen. who knows more than you and has a vested interest in your health. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't put yourself in a position of accountability, it won't work. Only 3% of the population could do it without being accountable to another person because most of them are accountable to many people. I need to take care of me because I'm going to speak before you. So I'm accountable to the people I speak to. Yeah. But if you want to make a plan, you want to make some changes and stuff like that, and you go off on a track, and you're accountable to yourself, you're not going to be scolding yourself in the mirror. Oh, you don't got to show up with yourself and hear the riot act. You don't have to, you're not going to hear the encouragement to get you back on the track. You're just going to say, well, I'll just whatever, maybe next week. You need to put yourself in a position of accountability. That's why we go to church on Sunday, to be accountable to the word that's being administered so we can be fed and don't go off. This is why our kids go to school, okay? Imagine this. Sending a kid to school to learn, but there's no tests. If there's no tests, why study? Because if you're not going to test me on what I learned, okay, then why am I going to sit there and cram all night? My daughter was, um, she had a, I don't know, some, some law test. And it was, it was a four-hour law test on some, some type of law. And um, the teacher said, oh, it could be from, it, it could be any, from this subject to this subject. And this kid was up all day and all night studying, okay? And they get to the test, and the four-hour test was now, well, you know what? We're going to make it a three-hour test. So what happens is, if she did not prepare, okay, when that test came, and even a tighter time constraint, it would have been disastrous. But now, she knows everything. And let me tell you something. She was argumentative before. You should see this one now. Now she comes up and gives me like, well, you know, according to this case, it's like, all right, you know what? You're going to get one of these. Now you're going to have a case. You're going to have another case. We're all going to have cases. The point I'm trying to bring up is this, is you need to put yourself in a position of being accountable. So like, for example, I want to challenge some of you folks, all of you folks, later on to come in and have a consultation with me. Okay? Now, after you come in, we may make a determination that I'm going to be able to help you or not. And if you say, okay, doc, I want you to help me, okay, you're going to need to be accountable. Mm -hmm. That means part of what you do is going to be doing with me to get you in the best shape of your life. Mm -hmm. Are you following me? Amen. Yeah. But you have to be accountable. Yes. And, I, and I am who I am, mm -hmm. okay? This is how I act. I act like this at home. I act like this in the office. I act like this now, okay? I give everybody, I treat everybody, I treat everybody like family. I treat everybody like family, and if you call my daughters up right now, they may not tell you that's a good thing. There are some people that I, they, I treat you like family, and they just like they placate you and they patronize you and uh -huh. they make you feel like all that. No, I don't do that, okay? Because my end result is your results. 
there's two things critically important. You getting well and my reputation, mm. which I will not compromise. Because mm. if I compromise taking care of you, that means I compromise my reputation. And then when you hear about me, you may hear that he has a compromised reputation and you're not going to come see me. And I happen to be, unfortunately, unfortunately, the only person in the body of Christ, correct, who does this stuff. Now, I'm not saying there's not other Christian doctors. And I'm not saying other doctors don't do something similar. But I'm talking this stuff. I'm talking about having a ministry weekend. I'm, having, I'm saying instead of being home, being getting ready to watch football games, I'm down here. I live an hour upstate. It was snowing before, okay? I, I brought the food in, okay? I, listen, I do this stuff because this is a urgent need. And we were talking about this. Amen. There's an urgent need right here in Bethlehem. Hallelujah. This is not the Bronx. This is Bethlehem. Because yes. when I went out to school in Long Island, okay, and when they found out I was in the Bronx, they were looking at me like, like what good is ever going to come out of the Bronx? Mm. Mm. And, I know that. and I asked the Lord, should I leave the Bronx? He said, no, you're in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I can't get rid of this Bronx accent. No matter how bad I try. When I was going to school out in Oral Robbins, okay, I was in the elevator. And, you know, everybody out in the Midwest, they're all friendly. Hi, how you doing? I said, I said, how you doing? <laughs> she goes, hmm, you're not from around here. <laughs> I said, no, I'm not. She goes, where are you from? New Jersey. I said, New Jersey. That's an insult. You know why? Because they were watching The Sopranos. Oh. <laughs> Everybody knows all the real gangsters are from New York City in the Bronx. Yeah, right. What are you kidding? After they make a little money, they go to New Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> My Uncle Frank had his place in the Bronx, okay? Yeah. Cut that one off. <laughs> I'll be sleeping with the fish by tomorrow. Okay, we're gonna take a we're gonna take a short break. But before we take a short break, okay? I just want to reiterate the necessity of what we're doing here today. Every single one of you, I'm singling out every single one of you. You too, Pastor, and Pastor, and Pastor's wife, <laughs> Jesus culture. <laughs> I'm singling everybody out here to make a change. There's not one person who I did not make eye contact with, even in the way back, and the way back back. Okay, I'm a man with a bad leg. <laughs> Pete. Hey. I'm singling out everybody here because everybody here, you're, if you're not in the fold, you're one of the sheep that got away. I'm going there. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing I'd ever want to hear is, yeah, I, you know what? I went to your program and I should have listened. And, uh, it's all right. But now, is there anything we could do? It's all right. Okay? You got to strike when the iron's hot. When the iron's hot right now. Because if the sword is going to bend to the strike, it has to do it when you're motivated to do it. So I'm just prepping you, okay? I'm going to give everybody a special mm -hmm. opportunity. And what happens is you've got to start practicing right now uh -huh. to start rebuking the excuses. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, I, I mean, anybody know here Bishop Bailey? Anybody know yeah. Bishop yeah. Brown Bailey? Yeah. Aside from Pete. Okay? Bishop's yeah. been around a long time, longer than me. On peace. He's got more gray hair than me. <laughs> and um, as busy as he is, he's in my office one or two times a week and he's been doing it for years. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because he's realized, right? Mm -hmm. He realized the principle. And the principle is this mm -hmm. is if you sow a good seed, you'll reap a good harvest. Mm -hmm. How many people need to make changes in their body? How many people are ready today to make those changes? Yes. Amen? Okay. Let's take a short break, okay? 